this world this world today is they're going back to the old times of an eye for an eye, but we're not doing it. It's it's Oh you're right. We're not. I made a mistake. Mark, you're going to have to talk for a second. I have no idea what you were going to say. I'm not a mind reader. I realize that, but I have no idea what you wanted to say. Uh, Well, we we never take the... I'm I'm trying to think of the word. Uh we we usually are uh, we usually don't take the offensive, okay, and go and attack them. We, you know, if anything, our we 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 respond to whatever happens to us. Uh usually in kind and maybe not right away, which uh some Americans argue about, but Sometimes, you know, you can't respond immediately. There, you know, the, the planning has to go into certain things. And if you're trying to catch certain people or kill certain people, you know, we, we care very much about, um, you know, uh, acceptable casualties, let's say. You know, uh, I have a cousin who worked for the Department of Navy. And... Very smart, you know. He had a photographic memory. He's a mathematician, and I used to ask him exactly what is it that you do. And he said, literally, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. He said because they play war games, you know, what if, and they they think up all kinds of scenarios. And as tough as this is, because you know, he's basically always been a very peaceful person. You know, as far as I know. But, you know, he said um, the way the admirals were looking at it, there's an acceptable number of casualties. Uh, It's like my dad, before Truman gave the order to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, was training for the invasion of Japan. Now, Eisenhower and... MacArthur and the other generals and Mountbatten, they were all figuring that the Allies would lose a half a million soldiers. And that was considered acceptable. Okay, imagine a half a million soldiers attack, you know, to be considered casualties during the attack on Japan. You know, but of course, the dropping of the bomb negated those plans and my father said basically Truman saved his life because my father said who would who would have known if I would have survived you know when you talk about casualties in that number yeah but that's what my cousin did you know it's uh it's like the movie war games if you remember with Matthew Broderick and Elizabeth Shue yeah, sure. I went to you the know. movies to see it and the bottom line is what they learned at the end of the chess game, the computer says the best thing is not to play the game in the first place, which is what man should really learn when it comes to war is let's just not do it. You know, I mean, it's certainly not worth it. Um, you know, you have and, and, and Felix, you know, the Rev and I have discussed and, and you've been privy to this, too, in discussions you know, soldiers that come back with PTSD and missing uh, limb. one limb, two limbs, three limbs, you know, and they're just happy to be alive. You know, I mean, uh, they know that they have a long road ahead for recovery. Some of them even say they wish they could go back and continue fighting because that's what they believe in. You know, we have an all-volunteer army. Uh, oh, I know that. So, I, I know you do. So the bottom line is only certain people get affected by this anyway, you know. Um, But we could talk about this, you know, and we have so many times. It's unfortunate that it does boil down to religion. I mean, many cases, politics, you know, uh, the politics is shaped by the religion of the people. You know, you have the West, and the West encompasses Europe and the United States, and then you have... 
uh, the Islamic countries, which uh, encompasses Yemen and the Sudan, along with Iran, Iraq, Syria, Egypt. Okay, all of these countries, the Ottoman Empire, Ottoman Empire, I'm going back to World War I, uh, Turkey, Pakistan, okay, um, yeah, but, let's see, there are 1.2 or 6 billion Muslims, so, turned us on us, we'd be in trouble, so most of them are, are just fine religious people who are peace-loving. Did, did you tell Elisa that you're actually thinking of becoming an imam also? I mean, you're already an ordained rabbi and a, and a minister. <laughs> you know, Felix is taking classes now, he, he, but he doesn't know which way to hold the Quran. Half the time, people are correcting him because he has it upside down and he can't even tell. Well, how do, yeah, it's not in English. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> It, it, it's not like hey, listen, in listen, Hebrew where you have if, it translated. If the Bible was written in English, so could the Quran be yeah, written okay. in English. <laughs> As You'll you be the say, one to, to do that. The, uh, we also, uh, what you miss is we read an article about Jefferson. And he ran into the same problem when he was president, 1801, I think it was. Yes, it was, um, you see, when, you you remember growing up and watching movies about pirates, don't you? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, the Barbary Coast pirates were all Muslims. They were all from, you know, the Ivory Coast. They were from what is now Iraq, Iran, Syria, okay, uh, certain parts of Spain, and, you know, they used to capture English or French ships, and if the person was a famous person, they would hold them for ransom, or they would sell them into slavery, behead or them. they would behead them. You know, so, you uh, know, uh, Jefferson said that basically, you know, he, he, he mapped out... Uh, a certain way of dealing with these with these pirates, you know. When we watched shows about Blackbeard or Blue 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 Blue, 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 Blue Beard, you know, they were all romanticized. Okay, we thought of them more as thieves than terrorists. Okay, and in fact, in many cases, we actually believe that the French or the British were the enemy. Okay. Uh, as opposed to the freewheeling, you know, uh, uh, pirates. But, uh, so so this is really nothing new. This has been going on for three, you know, about 275 years or more, almost uh, 290 years. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to read you something real quick. In 1785, while serving as ambassador... For the United States, Jefferson asked Tripoli's ambassador to Great Britain what right the Barbary states had that allowed them to kidnap and slaughter the innocent crews of passing merchant ships. According to uh, Jefferson, Sidi Haji Abdul Rahman Ajah replied that Islam was founded on the laws of the Prophet that it was written in their Quran that all nations who should not have acknowledged their authority were sinners, that it was their right and duty to make war upon them wherever they could be found and to make slaves of all all they could take as prisoners and that even Muslims who should be slain in the battle was sure to go into paradise. In essence, the ambassador from Tripoli stated that their religion, Islam, gave them the right to kidnap and murder and enslave those who held different beliefs. And this is what he was told. And Jefferson went back, and then uh, when they started kidnapping their ships, Jefferson sent the uh, Marines... This was the first war by the American nation 
on foreign soil and is where the line of the shores of Tripoli in the Marine Corps came, came from. It also believed the term leathernecks, which refers to Marines, comes from the thick leather neck coverings that the Marines wore to themselves from being beheaded by the giant swords wielded by the uh, Barbary pirates. So you could you can see this is the problems are going on for years. It's not just started, and, uh, and oh, I, 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 I know that. I mean, it it's from way. I, it's definitely from way back when. I mean, even didn't we just recently? And forgive my ignorance, but didn't we have a problem with with modern day pirates just like a couple of years ago? Yes, uh, Those Somali. 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 yeah, the S- Somalis. Somali. Uh, that was that was the whole thing with uh, Captain Phillips. Yeah, but they were just basically right. after money. They, were, they no, wanted money, right? There was no religion involved in this, but this was the, these uh, the Barbary were involved in uh, slavery, and uh, the countries were sending them out to do it, and. Uh, And what Jefferson did was re- he responded with force. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, and then, you know, the many, many uh, neocons, okay, the conservative, usually Republicans, uh, you know, uh, they're not happy unless the United States is at war with somebody, okay? Oh, that's I, I agree then again, on they, that. But, but then again, they don't have to go out and do the fighting, you know? But our history has been always that way, that we're just... My friend Phil Oaks, and I ain't a marching anymore, he said, it's always the old who lead us to the wars and always the young to fall. He said, look at all we've won with the saber and the gun. He says, tell me, is it worth it all? I mean, man's inhumanity to man. We've discussed this on this show, too. Yeah. Not this show today, but in the past. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, there's one thing that, that human being, that humanity does very well, and that is wage war, okay? And at the bottom of every war, in most cases, it's religion and political ideology. Early wars were all about religion. Later wars were all about political ideology. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Huh? And yeah. it's back to religion now. There's always something to do with religion. I mean, it's always been that way. The Crusades. Well, to quote Gilda Radner, well, I'll tell you, Jane, it's always something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't mean to make light of it, but the bottom line is it's true. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, you really, uh, we really appreciate you calling us tonight. Well, for one thing, I'm really, I'm really glad that Felix called you because you texted Felix to say, What's with the show, guys? Yeah, you we know. know. <laughs> now we're going to have to cut out half the first the show. half the show, <laughs> and it's probably going to begin with, with from the time you went on the air because you know we thought that we were being heard by the masses. You know. Nope. Uh, by the way, how's the quality now? That while you're talking to us, good. Yes, it is. It's excellent. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got one good thing out of it. You know. Hey. Because we would just, I, I, you know, we just like have the. If we had no luck, we'd be better off. <laughs> well, that's true. But I tell you, I tell you, Lisa, you know, we're really glad. And we always enjoy having you on the show. Okay, well, and you. we've missed you the last few weeks. I know you were getting well. You weren't well, okay, and everything. But we're really glad that you called in because we always have a good time when yeah. you call in. And also. Thank uh you. Mark has this desire to go to this restaurant. Yeah, we keep uh, Felix. I don't know. You know, we should we should get uh, uh, some sort of a, a fan club. No, not a fan <laughs> club. I mean, if we mention the name of the restaurant, you know, I mean that's free advertising. You know, you're plugging it. Yeah. Go ahead. What's the what's the restaurant? You know what you know what they'll do. They'll give us they'll give us a fortune cookie. <laughs> Walk and roll. <laughs> Oh, why Why did I know you were going to say that? Because if Felix and I are at the stage right now, especially in the winter where we're, we're not looking to make a trip to Jersey if we don't have to, you know? 
to go to uh, Harold's. 